I invite you to stand. The Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world, and that which contains all things understands what is said. Alleluia. Book of Wisdom, chapter 1, verse 7. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Um, today, uh, is, we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost um, this morning. Now, one of the things you might notice is that this uh, Mass has been, is premiering now at 9 a.m. or at least 9 a.m. Central Time. Um, it's not necessarily absolutely live. And so you're like, oh, wait, why did I just wait for this Mass? And why am I doing this right now? Um, it's because, as we talked about, like the second week we started live streaming these Masses, um, that nothing given to God is wasted, right? So at this moment, at this very moment, right now, when you're watching this, um, if you're watching it live, um, you're watching it in the morning, 9 a.m., um, I will be offering Mass, but we had to pre-record it so that I could offer Mass in the other place, but I'll be offering Mass tomorrow morning. So this is the Vigil Mass for us, but we're actually celebrating the Mass of the day for you all. So I just, again, don't turn this off. Continue to pray with us because I literally am, at this moment, saying the Mass with you with this recording at the time. Does that make sense? You guys make sense? Okay. Anyways, here we go. Um, actually, before we do anything, um, uh, as we enter into this Pentecost, we recognize that um, it's, it's the day in which the, the Lord God sent the Holy Spirit of fire upon his apostles. And right now, um, in this time of our, in, in our country, uh, our country, our world is on fire. Um, and there's this, this reality that we're all experiencing of uh, riots and burning in Minneapolis and Atlanta, in New York City, all over the place. Um, and one of the things that we need to do is we need to recognize that um, all of this is coming not necessarily from divisions uh, among peoples or divisions among races as much as it is divisions in our own in our own hearts. Yes, those other divisions absolutely exist, but the division that exists from the beginning of time is that all of us experience a brokenness and a woundedness. If you go back to the book of Genesis, in the first few chapters, there's this story of um, people who are united and they start building this tower and then uh, they're divided. They, they speak all these different languages and they go their own different ways and they have this division among them and it's called the story of the Tower of Babel. Or Babel. And so they experience, they, they speak all these different languages and they're no longer united and that's a symbol of the division we all experience in our own selves. But we don't even understand ourselves, we don't even know ourselves and how can we possibly know our neighbor? because we just don't speak the same language. And yet God answers that division with this today's feast. God answers the division of uh, peoples. He answers the division of races. He answers the division uh, in our own hearts by sending his Holy Spirit because the world is on fire. So what does God do? He sends his fire, his presence upon the apostles. And what happens? You're going to hear about it in the very first reading today, Acts of the Apostles. It says, the apostles began to speak and all these people are like, wait a second, we're from all over the place. We're from uh, the Near East, we're from the Far East, we're from Africa, we're from Europe. And we all understand what these people, what these men are saying. Because the world is on fire and that ex that our experience of that is brokenness and is uh, we're at each other's throats. And that's why God sent his Holy Spirit to set the world on fire with a different kind of fire, with a different kind of power. And that's important. On campus, we have this uh, saying. We don't have a saying. They have the saying. The university has the saying. The saying is, our diversity is our strength. Right? That's the key word right now. Diversity is like the big thing. So um, our diversity is our strength. And yes, diversity is wonderful. And I think what they're trying to say in that is they're trying to say, you don't have to fit a certain mold in order to belong to this community on campus. And I think, yeah, absolutely. It's super good. 100% endorse that. But diversity is not strength. We just have to, under, we have to acknowledge that. Diversity is not strength. Diversity that's been united is strength. Diversity that has been unified is strength. And that is, I mean, it's on our money. <laughs> e pluribus unum, right? From the many, one. It's not from the many, many. That's, that's powerless. But when the many come together, when they're united, that's something powerful. And it's one of the reasons why I'm just so grateful for being Catholic. Because Catholic means universal. 
doesn't mean Anglo, doesn't mean Hispanic, it doesn't mean Asian, it doesn't mean, it just, it means universal. And I love the fact that um, I think it, right now the stats are less than 20% of Catholics in the world look kind of sort of like me. <laughs> like less than 20% of Catholics in the world are of European descent. I don't know if you knew this, I have European descent. So that's, that's where I'm at. Wonderful, why? Because the church is universal. And the Holy Spirit has taken the many, has taken diversity, has even taken division, and it's brought us together in unity and in power. Because what we're praying for today is a spirit of power. And that spirit of power can only come into our lives when we let go of division and hold on to the spirit of unity. That's like a pre-homily, I guess, before Mass started, but um, that's what we need. We need the Holy Spirit. Because the world is on fire. We need a new kind of fire. Not to come to countries or to come to cultures, but to come to my heart. So let's pray right now that this Holy Spirit of fire comes into our hearts to heal divisions in, within us, to heal hatred and anger within us, to heal hostility within us, and to heal us by the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You lived to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and every nation, Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's Word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all together, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest, on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, El and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, 
Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Responsorial Psalm. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, Lord send, send out your spirit and renew, renew the, the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord, send, send out, out your, your spirit and renew, renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to have a seat. So we, we prayed uh, those words, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. And that's the thing is like, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is to renew. Um, and like, just, I just think about that. I've been praying about this, like knowing that we're coming down to Pentecost, going down to this moment, and that the work of the Holy Spirit is to renew. And like how badly that's needed right now for us to receive the Holy Spirit in such a way that um, the Lord can renew the face of the earth, that he can renew, renew cultures, that he can renew countries, that he can renew um, 
us. And so then the, the idea, I think, behind it, I, I always go into Pentecost with this idea of like, let's go, let's do, let's be on mission. Like last week we talked about, here's Jesus in the enunciate, or ascension, that's a, <laughs> all these A words. In the uh, ascension, he says, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And what's going to happen is you're going to have my co-mission. Like, I'm going to send you out. So go do, like, do great things. And that's, I think, what's needed, but at the same time, something's more important than that. Something's so much more important than mission. Something's so much more important than go. And so what the Spirit renews, what he has to renew first, is something deep inside of us. I was reminded recently of uh, one of our former students, his name was Clark. And um, Clark was raised, I've mentioned it before, uh, couple years ago, but Clark, Clark was raised in a, in a Catholic family and brought to Mass every, every Sunday and you know, was baptized, confirmed, went through all the things. His mom was really involved in their parish, his, his you know, siblings kind of involved, that kind of thing. Um, and Clark, Clark was just as involved as any person could have expect, you know, just living in Minnesota, going to church. Um, came up to UMD, more or less went to Mass every Sunday, and you know, a couple of years in there, like maybe three out of four weekends kind of a situation. It just kind of like, if you want to say like the, the gift of the Holy Spirit in his life just cooled. Jesus wasn't number one. Jesus wasn't Lord in his life. And then he graduated and left. And I wouldn't have known anything about the rest of his life except something happened to Clark after he left. Um, well, one is he moved from Minnesota to Wisconsin, which is just devastating. I mean, talk about exile. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> just... <laughs> um, but no, he went to Wisconsin. He was a, he was an engineer, and while he was there, he you know we do these podcasts every Sunday. We have, we podcast the homilies on, we record them and put them on on iTunes. And and he was like, you know, I miss UMD, and uh, I'm just going to tune into some of these things. And and for whatever reason, just the Holy Spirit spoke to him not when he was on campus, but after he had graduated and left campus. And something happened in Clark that was remarkable. Um. Something changed in him. Like, you know, he had, he had a reason. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. He had a reason to be Catholic. He had a reason to go to church. He had he, something. He, he knew why he was going to continue to be Catholic for the rest of his life. And he had been restored because he, he was going to live that life, like right with the temple, and you have the city, and you have the people, the community. He was restored. But there's something that had to happen. He had to be renewed. That the gift that God had given him in his baptism and his strength and in his confirmation, that had, that had to be changed. It had to be renewed. Um, but the first thing that changed in this is the crazy. The, he was given what I would call the first gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has so many gifts, right? The God himself, the third person of the Trinity, has so many gifts. Um, of, of wisdom and understanding and counsel and prophecy and fear of the Lord. The gift of, like, the gift of making us holy and making us children of God. But the first gift of the Holy Spirit is to know that you're loved. That's it. That's the first gift of the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, his first gift that he places inside every one of us is this depth of knowledge that you're loved. Which I think is not very common. I think most of us don't know that. I think we've heard it. I think we've been told it. But I'll say this a thousand times. I, I believe that most Catholics, um, while we've heard that God loves us, most of us really truly, if we're, if we're pressed, what do we believe? Well, I believe God tolerates me. That's one of the reasons why we need this renewal. We need, because we, we're living in exile. We're, we're made for the Father's house. We're made to live in the Father's heart. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And yet we don't. We don't live there. Um, I mean, that's it. We're, we're, we're living as if we're still in exile. We're living as if we don't have a home. We're, so many of are living as if we don't have a family. I say this even as Catholics. Here we are. We're living as if, maybe you're finding yourself right now, living as if you aren't really loved. Living as if you don't actually have a father. If the Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption, in fact, Scripture says this. It says, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts. The love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit so that we can cry out, Abba, Father. The only thing, the only reason we can even say, Abba, Father, is because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Why? Because we have the love of God poured into our hearts. What is the love of God? The love of God is the Holy Spirit. Because of that, we have access to the Father. And so many of us are living in exile because we're living as if we don't know what it's like to be loved.
You know, today's gospel, uh, someone pointed this out, one of our missionaries pointed this out to me. Today's gospel, Jesus says to the apostles, he says, as the Father sent me, so I send you, which is huge, right? That's the commission. That's the, let's go, let's bring salvation to the world. Let's bring mercy to the world. Before he said that, and that's in John 20, before Jesus says that, in John 15, Jesus says, as the Father loved me, so I love you. So later on, he says, as the Father sent me, so I send you now. But before that, he says, listen, as the Father loves me, so I love you. Think about this. This is at the Last Supper. John 15 is the Last Supper. So this is 50 days ago, over 50 days ago, from Pentecost. And through the, if you ever read those Last Supper discourses from like John 13 um, all the way through John 18, I think it is, all Jesus can say is basically this message of, do you have any idea how much you're loved? That's what he keeps saying. As a father loves me, so I love you. You don't have any idea. And this, that's the truth is like you can't have any idea how much you're loved. Because um, we, I think sometimes put God into this box where we don't acknowledge the fact that he knows. We don't really live in the, the reality that he knows us, like that he knew you before he chose you. Scripture says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Like, so Jesus, he already, God already saw it. God already saw all of the places you would fail. He already saw all the places you would mess up. He already, he knew about the infidelity. He knew about the abortion. He knew about the anger. He knew about the hatred that would be in your heart. He knew about how many people you would hurt. He knew it all before he chose you. So that's why Jesus is saying, like, do you have any idea how much I know all this and I still love you? That's he proves it in the cross and he, and, he, and he shows the power of that in the resurrection. That's why he restores us. But today he wants to renew us in this. He prays um, in John 17, I think it is John 17 or John 18. He says, uh, I'm praying for you. That, that He's talking to the Father. Talk, talking to the Father about his apostles. He says, I pray that the love with which you love me, Father, may be in them and I in them. Let's pause on this one for a second here. What is the love between the Father and the Son? The love between the Father and the Son, the love that the Father and the Son have experienced for all eternity is so real, so powerful, that it's actually a third person. It's the third person of the Trinity. It's the Holy Spirit. And so here's Jesus in John's Gospel saying, they don't have any idea. You have no idea how much I love you. And he's talking to his Father and he's saying, well, I pray for them, Father, that the love with which you love me may be in them. And then at Pentecost it happened. And on like this day, it actually happened because that love is the Holy Spirit dwelling inside all of us, abiding in us. His presence. Like bringing us back from exile, saying, I abide in you now. That's one of the reasons why St. Paul says that you're now temples of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because in the old temple, that was the place where God's presence would abide. That's the place where God's presence would reside. It would you, you, get, you got to the temple a couple times a year and you realize, in, although, although God is everywhere, right? God is there all places. He's omnipresent. He's particularly present in the temple. It's one of the reasons why when the Jews came back from exile, from Babylon, and they rebuilt the temple, it says the young men, young people, when they laid the foundation stones, they, cr- they cried out for joy. They were so excited. They were rejoicing. But it says in in the book of Ezra, chapter 3, it says very puzzlingly, it says, but the elders, those who had seen the old temple, they wept. Because in some mysterious way, God's presence was missing. In some mysterious way, he wasn't fully restored because their lives were not fully renewed. But your temple of the Holy Spirit, 
that he abides in you. The problem with a lot of us, though, is uh, we don't let him abide in us. We don't know how to be loved. And we don't let him abide in us. You know, we just know this truth that you can't add the Holy Spirit to a life that's lived contrary to the Word of God. You, know, you can't just add the Holy Spirit to a life that's lived contrary to the Word of God. As a good friend of mine, his name is Dan Krebsbach. He's a missionary for Focus, and, and he said this before. Um, you can't just turn your baptism off. <laughs> you know, you were baptized at one point. You were confirmed at one point. You can't just turn your baptism on and off. You can't just turn your confirmation on and off. If you're loved by the Father, that's it. You're loved by the Father. And I can't just say, I'd rather not be loved right now. You can't add the Holy Spirit to a life that's lived contrary to God's word. So contrary, that's lived contrary to his love. You can't just turn it on and off. But, but it, here's the good news. But it can be renewed. God's presence in your life, God's gifts in your life, God's Holy Spirit in your life. The baptism, your baptism can be renewed. Your confirmation can be renewed. That's one of the reasons why on Easter we renew our baptismal promises. And today, what I'm going to invite us all to do is to renew our confirmation. Today, to renew your confirmation. And, and you do that to realize, first of all, not because God wants to send me out to do something, but because he just desperately wants me to know how much he loves me. I'm walking through this world as, I'm still, as if I'm still in exile, as if... I'm not actually loved by my father. This goes back to Clark. One of the things that just hit him so powerfully when he was by himself in exile in Wisconsin is this truth of, oh my gosh, the father loves me. I have access to him at all times, at all places, in all moments. And even when Clark got cancer, he had cancer with this, he bore it with such courage with such strength, with such fortitude, with such love, because he's like, no, I'm, I'm facing this as one who's loved. I'm facing this have been, have, having been given the Holy Spirit. The love of God lives inside of me. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. He abides in me. His presence is true. And that's the thing, the truth about the temple is it was a place where the Holy Spirit would abide. But this is the second thing and the last thing. The truth about the temple is that not only was it the place where the Holy Spirit would abide, the temple was also the place of sacrifice. And so if you and I are made into the temples of the Holy Spirit, not only is God's love in us and we get to be loved and have access to the Father, but we also, we then become the place of sacrifice. That's one of the reasons why St. Paul writes to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and beloved. At every Mass, we say this. We say, Lord, accept us as an oblation to you. Let us be the sacrifice to you. Why? Because... With the Holy Spirit, you are the temple of God. And the temple is not only the place where the Holy Spirit and God's presence abides, it's also where the sacrifice happens. And Clark in his life, he so badly, he said, I just, I want to get better so that I can lead Bible studies. I want to get better so that I can lead other people to God's love. He said, I want to get better for purpose. I want to get healed of this cancer so that I can live and serve God with every breath for the rest of my life. But he didn't get better. That cancer killed him. But when the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, not even cancer can stop you. Because this is the reality. The truth is, he offered himself as a living sacrifice, holy and beloved. Not only was his body the temple of the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit of God, the love of God would abide and hold him, his body was also the place of sacrifice. And with every pain, and with every breath, and with every injury, and with every last heartbeat, it was a prayer. Because the Holy Spirit poured out into Clark transformed every breath, every heartbeat, every wound, every pain into a prayer, into a place of sacrifice. So he did not get the chance to lead many people to Jesus through a Bible study. But even now, because he was willing to be loved first, the first gift of God is to be loved to be a temple 
of God's presence. And then ultimately, to be the temple where God is worshipped in sacrifice. I can honestly and assuredly say that there are lives that are even saved even now because of the Holy Spirit that's been poured out into his heart. That as Clark was able to cry out, Abba, Father, now there are people who today, because of that sacrifice, because of that transformation, because Clark let himself be loved, who today, at this Mass, are crying out the same words. I know I have a dad in heaven because the Holy Spirit has poured into my heart, my heart, because of the witness of my friend, of my son, of my brother Clark. This is the gift of Pentecost. The first gift of the Holy Spirit. To know you're loved. And to be renewed in that love. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand. 50 days ago, at the Easter Vigil, we renewed our baptismal promises. And we were renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so on this day, on this Feast of Pentecost, I invite you not only to renew your baptismal promises, but renew your confirmation that the Spirit of God may come upon you once again, that he can renew not only the face of the earth, but the depths of your heart. So my brothers and sisters, we have been through the Paschal Mystery with Christ. We've experienced his resurrection, his life with the apostles, his ascension to heaven, and now his Pentecost. I invite you to now, as this season of Easter is concluded, to renew our promises of a holy baptism and of our confirmation, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, my brothers and sisters, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil and re so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we offer our prayers in the power of the Holy Spirit to God our Father who loves us. that the church, filled with the Spirit of Christ, may be ever renewed to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all those who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the wisdom and strength of the Holy Spirit fill all entrusted with public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, who have the Holy Spirit as our advocate, may in turn be advocates for the vulnerable, the forgotten, and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have been affected by the death of George Floyd, for his family, for the communities who have experienced violence, and for, the, for healing and unity in this country, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may experience the presence and healing power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be purified by the Spirit and share eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to allow God to teach us how to be loved by his Holy Spirit that has been poured into our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue our prayer by offering our diocesan prayer for vocations. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work. Make the us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may inherit we may merit to inherit, obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our, of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Alleluia. Acts chapter 2, verses 4 and 11. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just two quick announcements. Um, one is that uh, we're going to keep trying to do the stream mass. So sometimes it's going to be live. Sometimes it might have to be recorded. Um, hopefully you were able to pray uh, with us on this day. Um, I know that also uh, I need to keep this brief because my brother or my uncle or other family members would be like, what the heck? You gave like three homilies today. So I'm keeping it very short. Um, speaking of homilies, the other announcement is um, I know some people on the chat had, had asked like, where do we get more of these things? We have um, access to, we have as I mentioned in the homily, I think, we post homilies every single Sunday that I say Mass. I record it and then post it online at, at, on iTunes and SoundCloud and our website. So if you're, you're interested in checking that out, even after these live stream Masses might cease, please feel free to do that. Um, but we'll continue to pray with you because I know that not everyone has access. Um, we have access to the Father, but we don't necessarily have access to our churches. And so we keep praying. St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina. Mater misericordiae, vita dulce do, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii eve, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ergo, advocata nostra, Ilos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clement. O pia, o, 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 o dulcis, Virgo Maria.